Hi there, welcome back to part two uh, of my in-depth look at Ableton Live 10. Uh, so we're going to look at automation um, in this one. And I'm going to kind of, as I've been using it and I do more things, I'm going to kind of add a few little bits in I've found that I like about it or that I don't like about it, um, which may not be necessarily relevant to automation. But um, there we go. Um, one one thing, it's always annoyed me. I don't know if it's my computer, but I've tried this on, on loads of different computers and my laptop is pretty powerful. It's an i7 processor and whatever. It still seems to take forever for the program to start, which which annoys me because it should start quicker than that. But, you know, it's, that's one of those things. Um, an improvement I have noticed because I've just actually tried out loading a, a video in, uh, that actually just seemed to load, the video and the audio did seem to load a hell of a lot quicker than Live 9. So that that's certainly an improvement. But... Uh, yeah, I just wish they could improve the startup times, but anyway. Um, right, so automation we're going to look at now. So there's a new, what's called a global automation mode, which is this thing here. Um, so this is the normal view. If we click on that, we're in automation mode. And you can toggle that on and off with the A button on your computer keyboard. I think I mentioned that in the, uh, in the previous video. Um, so let's find there we go so if i turn that on let's do it from here okay you can see these automation lanes all appear and then we're now sort of in what i would call automation view um so yes right so a couple of things that we can have a look at for automation um the first one is turn off automation view and we're going to have the um the normal not all, uh, sorry Ooh, what was that <coughs> excuse me <laughs> right can't c compose yourself yeah my voice it might you know it might break one day <laughs> you'd have thought it would have done by now at my age but anyway um right the fades because obviously fades are part of automation so previously in live nine to find our fades we had to go well first of all we've got to find an audio track uh, we had to go in here, you had to go to fades, and then they all appeared with all these lines on here, and yeah, a lot easier now. If we select the clip, our fades are now controlled by these little anchor points here. Um, so you now get them from those, right? So rather than having to fiddle about with there, they only appear when your clip or your track is three units high so that's one unit so there's nothing there that's two units if i click on it oh no is there on two it said at least three that must be three units high anyway let's go actually now i'm assuming that's one yeah that's one unit that's two units so they're not there that's three units and they are there all right so you need to have them three units high to um for them to be visible there's a bit more coming up on the um the fades later on in this video uh, I mentioned previously, you can now, if, I, if we're in the global automation mode, um, if I want to split a clip or reverse a clip or um, anything kind of I, I do in here on a time selection will now affect the main clip. So I can work in the automation clip. Let's say I want to split it there. It will split the main clip for me, um, which is quite useful if you particularly you've got a lot of automation clips you know you're working right down here and you want to line something up with some automation uh that, that's quite a useful um, feature just to be able to sort of split and consolidate as well um well, that works. so if i wanted to consolidate that okay i can consolidate from there as well again same shortcut for consolidate control j let's just get that back to originally where it was um okay automation breakpoints are a lot easier to work with now Let's just go back to Live 9. Uh, let's just get rid of the fades. Um, off there. Uh, so I'll just do the volume. Okay, so for doing automation here, if I wanted this to sort of be up here, I would have to put a breakpoint and then drag it up. What we can now do is, I'll do it on the volume again, uh, which is this one. Let's just zoom in a bit so you can see what we're doing. Maximize that. Okay, so we can you still create a breakpoint as before, but if I now know I want this to be down here, I can just double click and it will put the breakpoint for me there. And I don't have to drag it. So if I want it kind of there. So it does make it a lot quicker for creating your breakpoints because you're not going to click and then drag. So that's a nice new feature. 
Yeah. So what you got to remember is if you want to create MIDI clips, don't forget if you looked at the if you watched the previous video um, when we're not in automation mode, you can double click here and it will create a MIDI clip for you. If you're in automation view. Oh, hang on. It did do it then. I think you've got to be. Yes, you've got to be in the main bit up here to create your MIDI clip with a double click. OK, not in the uh, the automation view thing there. Let me just try that again. See if I've got that right. OK, so it works there. You're in there. It doesn't work there, but if you get rid of that. I know it doesn't. Right. So no, you do need to be not in automation mode uh, to create your MIDI clip with a double click. It would appear. If that makes sense, hopefully. OK, so we've got a, a few new features on how we can move automation around and the sort of visual feedback that we get. Um, in Live 9, you had to hover your cursor over the breakpoint to get the value of the uh, breakpoint that you were at. You now sort of get basically a that anywhere you put your cursor. So it doesn't just have to be on a breakpoint. Okay, so you can kind of slide it down there and it will see. So that gives you a bit more visual feedback. Um, another useful thing is you can actually now move your automation left or right. So let's say I've I've obviously just selected all this this section of time here. If I just put my cursor underneath, okay, so it's going to move everything. I can now move left or right. And that's going to snap to the grid as well. So depending on which, you know, I'm on eighth notes now. So it can move that left and right. So we've got um, horizontal movement as well as vertical movement. Um, okay, because previously, if I did that, if I move horizontally here, nothing happened. Okay, you could only move up and down before. So it's quite a useful way of moving your clips around. Um, sorry, your automation lines, moving them around. Um, and snapping to the grid as well, which is also useful. Um, you can also override snapping to the grid by holding down the Alt button, and then they will just kind of slide wherever. And that goes with, with anything. When we're moving anything, hold your Alt button down. I think it's Command on a Mac, um, and that will kind of get it out of snapping to the grid. Um, this is quite a useful feature as well. Um, let's say I've, I've selected a, a, a section here, and I put a new breakpoint in. As soon as I put the breakpoint in, Okay, that time selection disappears, which means I can easily then move that breakpoint around. You couldn't do that previously because if I put a new breakpoint in here, the time selection stays. So it, you, it kind of moves everything then. All right. So um, what you'd have to do that is let's get that back in there to get rid of that. I would have to unselect it. And then if I wanted to move that bit. So again, it's not a massive thing, but it's quite a useful, um, a useful little thing to be able to do that. OK, so the next one is just sort of looking at how we can move around and drag our um, automation breakpoints. Um, they do now snap to the grid like that. I don't think it did that before. Let's have a look on Live 9. Um, no, it didn't before. So that's useful. Um, so because, I mean, most of the time you're going to want your automation. Well, not most of the time, but some of the times you want it to snap to the grid. So, you know, it's quite you can see there it sort of jumps to it again. If you don't want to do that, you just want to slide it along, hold down your Alt button or your Command button on a Mac, uh, Alt on PC. Um, on Live 9, let's say I wanted to move that breakpoint beyond the next breakpoint. You couldn't do it without having to hold down Shift, and then you could move it. Uh, that's now gone. You can just move them wherever you want, right? So I can now shift that all the way past the others, and you can move them around. So it's a lot more flexible uh, for moving your breakpoints around. Um, let's see what it's next. Yeah, so we've talked about the, uh, obviously you've got the automation values I showed there. Um, and we've also talked about moving, being able to move um, stuff horizontally as well as vertically. Um, this is quite useful as well if you create um, a breakpoint near a, um, a line on the grid, it will snap to the grid. So you don't have to, because you used to before, if you wanted to get it right on, I mean, you, let's just get it on a clip here. Um, you know, if I wanted to get the, say, exactly on that beat there, I used to have to zoom right in and get it right in there. And let's just change my grid. So now all i got to do is just sort of click roughly near it and it will 
snap it exactly on the grid. Okay, so you don't, so you can do it from like a view there and it will snap to the grid for you, which again is pretty useful. Um, when we're moving breakpoints up and down, uh, we now get this line. You can see that black line has appeared, so that helps you kind of keep it in in its vertical place. On Live 9, we didn't have that, so you could, it was quite easy to sort of move side to side and lose the, the line of that if you wanted to keep it on that beat. Okay, so when you're moving up and down like that, it's going to snap to the grid, but a slight movement of your mouse and it's not going to move. So we get this nice vertical line that helps with that. And I think we're nearly there. Uh, sorry about keeping these videos short. This one's going to be another 10, 15 minute. Um, yeah, the fades we talked about previously. Just going to look at a little bit more of those. We get these what are called fade handles now. So I need to come out of the automation view. We'll get this a little bit bigger. So if we click on it, so the fades kind of work as they did before, like that, and you've got the flexibility of, you know, changing it like that. But we now have this thing at the bottom as well that we can change. Um, let's go on the fades back on here. Where are we? There. Okay. So you could obviously, previously we could change the top, we could change that, but we couldn't change the end point of where it was there, which we can now do just to get you a bit more flexibility on your fades. Obviously you can't have the end point going further beyond there, but it does mean if you wanted to extend your clip. Okay, so let's just extend that. So we've got a bit of silence at the end. I'm gonna just need to consolidate that just to make it one new clip. Okay, so you've just a bit more flexibility really. You can have that there and you can choose the end bit there so it kind of just gives you you know you can pretty much get any shape you want for your fades which again is is useful for um just added a bit of perfection on your fades i think at the end of the day which is what it's all about um and i think the last one for automation is um no actually that is it so that's pretty much covered all the automation let's say the main feature is this that that new view well not i wouldn't say the main feature but as a big feature but basically automation now is a lot more flexible you can do a lot more with it move stuff around a lot easier um so it's quite uh, quite useful time saving aspect of the update for that one okay i'm going to leave this one here thanks for watching um i'll finish with my usual things of please like subscribe share it around check my music out spotify apple tunes apple tunes whatever that is um apple music itunes deezer beatport usual sort of places okay thanks for watching and i'll see you in part three okay so this is just a quick addition on the automation one one bit that i forgot to mention i think i forgot to mention if i didn't mention it then watch it again anyway um is that the uh, automation breakpoints will now snap to the grid points which again is very useful for uh, getting your automation breakpoints exactly on a certain beat. Live 9 here, if we put a breakpoint in and we drive it, drag it from left to right, it's just kind of like a smooth thing. And to get it actually on that grid line there, you've got to sort of be a bit of trial and error, really. Um, so now for a break, put a breakpoint in here, as I drive, drag it across, you'll see it kind of zips straight to the next breakpoint, which is very useful for getting your things, your breakpoints exactly on the grid if you don't want to do that and you want to as it was before you just hold down command on a mac alt on pc and then you're free to move it not on the grid um yeah it's it's, it's a useful feature i thought i just i'm pretty sure i forgot to leave it at, put it in sorry i'm pretty sure i left it out of the first video so that's why i just put this bit in now okay cheers